chapter 9 is the story of uh, one of the greatest apostles, Apostle Paul, and his conversion on the road to Damascus with letters in his pocket to put Christians in prison and even to kill them because they spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And funny enough, the man had an encounter on the road. You know, so if, you, if you're still wandering around in the dark, don't be amazed if you get an encounter with the living God. Hmm? Yeah. Man, this is good. Okay, verse 20. Now, Paul is getting up and a disciple by the name of Ananias just laid hands on him to receive his sight. He got baptized, he got filled with the Holy Ghost and straightway, verse 20, he preached Christ in the synagogues. I mean, he didn't wait for anything to happen. Straightway, he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. You know the controversy there. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on his name in Jerusalem? And he came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priest. But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus proving that this is very Christ. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their laying await was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. And, but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he, this is Paul, had seen the Lord. Saul, long before he was even called Paul, hmm? remember a lot of years, he had to spend three years in the Arabic desert and then he had to spend two years in another place and then you know five years and I explained that one day Saul before he was called Paul you know just after his conversion just after his let's call it just after his encounter with the Lord you know just after his encounter with Jesus Christ was led down Keep on writing, neat Kubus was laid down <laughs> in a basket. Right. Is that all right? Verse one. And Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to, to Damascus, to the synagogues. Now, we just heard what he did in Damascus. He was preaching the gospel in their synagogues. But what did he go to do in Damascus? To put the Christians in prison. So before he came to Damascus, he had an encounter. So by the time he arrived in Damascus, he preached the gospel. Is that all right? Is that cool? And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. What's he going to do in Damascus? Put Christians in prison. What did we just read later on in the chapter? What did he do in Damascus? He preached Jesus that he was the very Christ, poor, manifested Son of God in their synagogues. Okay? And when he came near to Damascus, suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth. And heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said unto him, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. And he trembling and astonished. Okay, you see that? Lord, what will you have me do? Okay, he was trembling. He was astonished. A bright light shone around him. It was so awesome, he fell from his horse. And lying there, he saw. Who are you? He said, I am Jesus. So he's seen the Lord. 
and he tells it over again in Acts chapter 26 to King Agrippa. He says, O king, the Lord appeared unto me and said, For this reason have I appeared unto you and will appear unto you again. So Paul had constant appearances of the Lord Jesus. Of the first, he was fearing, he was trembling, he was shaking. It was so powerful, he was knocked off his horse and he was lying there. Is that cool? 2 Corinthians 12. Seek out of the book of the Lord and read. Not one of these details of prophecies shall fail. Verse 16. None shall want and lack her mate in fulfillment. For the mouth of the Lord is commanded and his spirit, spirit has gathered them. So don't try and prove anything from any event and try and put the Bible in there. If you want to teach Bible, get a scripture that'll prove a scripture, that'll prove a scripture, that'll prove a scripture. And starting off, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 and 7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So if a doctrine instills fear in you, is not God, because Romans 8 and Hebrews 2 says, He delivered us from the bondage of fear. Okay, 2 Corinthians 12. With what's on the board, let's see if we find a mate. <clears throat> so let's start at 11 verse 30. Amplified Bible. Paul says, If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my infirmity of the things by which I am made weak and contemptible in the eyes of my opponents. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ knows. I shared it with our brothers this afternoon. In the Old Testament, he is, God, he is the God of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. In the New Testament, he's the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we do not know Christ after the flesh, but we know the Christ of the Spirit, the new. We don't know the flesh, son of David. We know the Son of God that came with resurrection and ascension power into this world, all right? He says, the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ knows he who is blessed and to be praised forevermore that I do not lie. Would you underline that Paul says, I do not lie? Now, the only other disciple or apostle that ever said that was the apostle John. He says over and over in his book, what I write, I do not lie. What I write, I do not lie. I tell you the truth, I lie not. So if you read John, who wrote the book of the Revelation, you must find out that what he says there, he does not lie. In Damascus. The city governor acting under King Aratus guarded the city of Damascus on purpose to arrest me. And I was actually let down in a rope basket or hamper through the window, a small door in the wall, and I escaped through his fingers. True. There is nothing to be gained by it. So Paul says, I, I don't want to boast on anything but on the fact that I was actually weak in a lot of stuff. And I want to tell you, you know, when I started preaching the gospel in Damascus, they let me down in a basket. Did we just read it in Acts chapter 9? Where did it happen? Just after his conversion. How? On his way to Damascus, he had a meeting with God. Falling off his horse, trembling and shaking. An awesome experience. A light shocked him down off his horse. And the next minute, you know, he got up and Ananias anointed him there in the street called Straight. And he was in Damascus. And instead of putting them in prison, he's now preaching the gospel in their synagogue. They wanted to kill him and they let him down in a basket. So is Paul referring to that's the story. Huh? So he says, I lie not, and then he says, true. There is nothing to be gained by it as I'm obliged to boast. I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ 14 years ago. What's he relating to? When he was knocked down and went to preach and they dropped him down in a basket. So he says, 14 years ago. I want to boast because then what can I gain for it? So I'd rather talk about like I'm talking about another man. That's how awesome the experience was. It's so great that he didn't feel like me. Is that all right? Huh? 
Whether, he says, I know a man in Christ 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know God knows, was caught up to the third heaven. And I know that this man, whether in the body or away from the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise. And he heard utterances beyond the power of man to be put into words which man is not permitted to utter. So this same story Paul relate to later on in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, you know, actually 11 and 12. And this is how he says it. He says, man, you know, I want to tell you, when I was laid down in the, mount, down in the basket from the, the wall of the city, this is what led up to it. He said, it was so much that I don't know, was I in my body? Was I out of my body? He says, I just know that it's unlawful. In other words, the law people will never take what I'm going to tell you, how I was caught up, how I was laid down, how I was in a state of, wow, who are you? Sunday, while we were singing, I was caught up. I, it happens normally in worship. And I saw myself in my grade 12 class. And I saw my teacher saying, Van Rensburg, read us your essay. I thought, why would he ask me to read my essay? You know, I never thought of it. Till Sunday, I was caught up and I saw how he was walking. He said, he gave us a few points. He said, write an essay on this or that. And then he would walk, you know. We were a big class, a boys' school. And then he would walk up and down, you know, the aisles, and he would check us. You were in school, were you? Anybody? We don't sit with Elias here, don't we? You know, I mean, do we? <laughs> okay? And I... And I realized I was really so into writing the essay. And he said, Van Rensburg, now you've got an opportunity to make name for yourself. Read us your essay. And as I read it, he said, how do you like that for an essay? He said, he should do this at a best speaker competition. And so I thought, there God prepared me to preach. I loved essays. Hmm? And Sunday God showed me, he prepared me to preach in a way because I wrote down every point that he said. On the, I said, I'm going to use not that point and that point. I'm going to use all his points. And I'm going to write him an essay that will make him shake behind his desk. <laughs> and I took all the points and I wrote an essay. If it had to be 10 pages, I wrote 15 pages. Because I just loved the essays. And I thought, why would he give all the points if I must only use five? My wife and my children know by this time that I was a naughty boy. Because they've met many of my school friends. But when it was time to listen, I didn't play around. When the teacher was talking and somebody bothered me, I said, shut up, teacher's talking. But when teacher was not talking, I had my elastic bands, my darts, my everything. <laughs> Okay. Don't worry, it's got nothing to do. Okay, so I said in the Old Testament, they called on the God of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. Now we just heard that Paul says, the God, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what happened in between with the Old Testament saints and the New Testament saints that the one had a God of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob, and the other one has the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's look at Hebrews 11. Talking about a lot of people that lived in the Old Testament. Verse 13. These all died in faith. Hmm? Now we know we don't live in faith. We live by faith. Okay, And we live by the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. We walk by faith. We live by faith. Not in faith, because if you are in the faith, you can die in the faith. But if you live by faith, you've got to live. Okay, It's a revelation that you will only get if you listen to some DVDs. Verse 13. These all died in faith, 
not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Ephesians 2 says we are no longer strangers and pilgrims. For they that see, say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better, that is a heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. The apostle says here that God prepared a city for the Old Testament saints that declared they were strangers. And they looked for a country that was heavenly. So they wanted to go to heaven, the Old Testament saints. They said, we're looking for a heavenly city. So God prepared for them a heavenly city. So today there's people that still singing, we are looking for a city. Mm. And they look for pearly gates and they look for, you know, stuff like, it may sound good till you truly read the Bible and don't read the Rand Daily Mail, okay? <clears throat> chapter 12. No, chapter 11, verse 39. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided better things for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Okay? So, they looked for a city. They looked for a heavenly city. So what God did, he prepared one for them. Then he says, they without us. So there's definitely two groups. The Old Testament and the New Testament. The flesh and the spirit. The natural and the spiritual. Okay? So there's definitely two groups. So they without us could not be made perfect. Mm -hmm. Chapter 12. Wherefore, seeing we. Okay, here's the other group. They and we. They without us. Now, wherefore, seeing that we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Amplified. Therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony of the truth. So, we and they. We are surrounded by them. Who are they? They are a cloud of witnesses. Of what? Of how they lived in faith looking for a city. Okay? So, uh, they are now called a cloud surrounding us. Okay? But before they became that, they could not reach perfection without us. <laughs> Verse 22. But you, okay? It's now not they, it's now you. Yeah. Which is part of the we. Yeah. We are, we are, we are, oh, we are, we are, you, you, you. All right? Somebody wrote me an email said, how can you do that in the church? Like this. We are, we are, we are, oh, we are, you, you. Okay. Verse 22. Huh? Yeah, big revelation. <laughs> but you 
are come. Not going to, are come. Not looking for, are come. To Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. So we have come to something that they looked for. We're not looking for it. We, we have come to it. They looked for it. We don't. We have already come to it. To an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. So they without us could not be made perfect. Now, so we have come to this cloud, but now we have come to the spirits. To the spirits. To the spirits. To the spirits. To the spirits of just men made perfect. We haven't come to them. We have come to their spirits. We haven't come to them because them are dead. We haven't come to them. Them are dead. But we have come to them spirits which are now in them clouds. And them are surrounding we, we, are, 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 are they. Okay? Are you okay? They, you were there when Grandpa Jack was laid down in the grave. So you can't dig him up. But where's his spirit? Surrounding us. Joining the clouds. I hope he was righteous. Okay? So... <laughs> I'm sure Uncle Jack appeared unto me last night. No, he can't appear, he's dead. But maybe it was his spirit. And to Jesus, the mediator of the New Testament. Now, I want to ask you, Romans 8, 34, Hebrews 7, 25, Hebrews 9, 24, 1 Timothy 2, verse 6. All those scriptures say there is one mediator between God and man, man Christ Jesus. Is Jesus your mediator? Yes. Have you come to Jesus? Does the Bible say, no man come to the Father but by me? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So have you come to Jesus? Yes. Then you've come to the rest too. We have come to Mount Zion. We have come to the spirits of the just. We have come to innumerable count of angels. We have come to, the, to Jesus, the mediator of a New Testament. 27. And this word, yet once more, signifying the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. He says, once more I will shake the heavens and the earth. And the shaking will remove the stuff that can be shaken. And that which cannot be shaken... Cannot be shaken... Well, five times, Psalm 37, I will remove the unrighteous. So that the righteous can inherit the earth. Proverbs 2.37, over and over, you can read it. Blessed are the meek, they will inherit the earth. 
you know. Our Father which art in heaven, let your kingdom. Kingdom come. So we, with this shaking, are receiving. A kingdom. That cannot be shaken. So if it can't be shaken, cannot be removed. You got it. Got it? You got it? Okay, I think that's good enough. Let's go do the popular first Thessalonians four. Did you know a dream can be either God speaking to you or it can be the stuff that is troubling you and it annoys you in your sleep or it can just be a conglomeration of everything you went through in the last couple of days. Stuff that you read, stuff that you looked, stuff that you watched, stuff that you did, stuff that you were involved and they're all mixed up and you think it's an awesome story. You've got to discern. Is it according to the Bible? If not, it's not a dream. It's you haunting yourself in your sleep because you couldn't sort it out in your prayer time before you went to bed. Why is it law? Because you've got to do a lot of stuff to be ready for Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. The Bible we read is, He did a lot to make me ready. I didn't do anything to make myself ready. He did it to make me ready. Colossians 1 says, He gave himself up and died on the cross to present me holy and unblameable. If you must do it, it means you got saved by works. And we are fortunately saved by grace. I'm sorry, you can dream, you can tell it anyway. If it's not Bible, full stop, is not God. So what can you do to be ready? I am ready. Amen. How did you get ready? He clothed me with a robe of righteousness after he washed me in his blood. Amen. Called me his own, called me his son. Verse 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. So here is again at those who lived in the old that looked for a city. Because he became the first fruits of those that slept. How do I know that? Matthew 27 says, when Jesus gave up the ghost and blew out his breath, it says the, there was an earthquake like never before and the graves of the just people were opened. But they did not come out till after the resurrection. Because Jesus had to be the first from the dead. And after his resurrection, they started appearing in the streets of Jerusalem. So this is them. Okay. That slept. For since by one man came death, by one man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So now he's talking about another group. But every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, afterward, they that are Christ's at his coming. Okay? Not second coming, coming. Wait, oh, at the second coming of Christ. Brother, Christ has been coming for 2,000 years. Over and over, he's been coming into churches. He's appeared on islands. He's appeared unto Muslims. He appeared unto Hare Krishnas. He appeared unto the Koreans. He's been coming over and over and over and over. But not like the first time. The first time he came as king and was rejected and became savior. He can't come to be crucified again. Yeah. Paul says if we crucify him again, I mean we are most wicked of all men. Yeah. So he can't come again to be crucified or to rule in Jerusalem. He can't come for that again. He already came for that. So there must be another coming. So let's try and find out. Don't switch off. Like I said, one hour. Yeah, and you're not dairy with me one hour. Okay. <laughs> Verse 23. 
Okay? But every man is on Christ first, after with that Christ coming. Verse 24. Then comes the end. You got to listen tonight because it's going to be different of anything maybe you ever heard in all your life. Then the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put all rule and authority, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority, and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Three verses. Trust that you are in the house and all over the earth you are watching and you are all ears. Number one, the end is the kingdom will be handed back to the Father. When all rule and all authority and power has been put down and all enemies all enemies under his feet and the last enemy is death now please read the bible with the bible to get the mate for the mate hmm? All rule put down. Now Ephesians 1.22 says the following. God raised Jesus up far above all principalities. He didn't say put them down. He's just far above them all. Okay, you got to listen because I'm going to bring something to you that we're going to... Hmm? But when all enemies are under his feet, the last enemy to be conquered is death. Hebrews chapter 2, I think it's verse 13, around about. He says, when he died through death, Christ, oh man, I'm using the board and I don't, mustn't. Through death, Jesus destroyed, okay, through death, Jesus <laughs> destroyed him that had the power over death. That is the devil. Jesus did not destroy death because people are dying. He destroyed him that had power over death. That is the devil. The last enemy is death. So Jesus is sitting on my right hand, Hebrews chapter 1, over and over, till your enemies be made your footstool. So Jesus must sit till all the enemies. So is death yet conquered or are still people still dying? People dying, okay? In other words, Jesus hasn't come in this context yet. Because he must sit until. So there's a certain context in which he has not come yet. So if we start getting death under our feet, it means he has come totally in me. Then I have conquered death. Is that all right? Is that all right? Verse 28, and when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. I'm sorry. When I get to that city, I cried holy. And I saw Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and Timothy. But I said, I want to see my Jesus. At the end of the day, the only Jesus you will see 
is the Jesus in the church. Because when everything is subdued unto him, he will disappear from the scene and God will be all in all. They'll be just God. Oh, that's new age. No, no, that's Bible. In the beginning, when God created, was Jesus walking on the earth? Or was the Spirit upon the face of the waters? Jesus manifested 2,000 years ago. What did he do then? He disappeared back into the clouds. Where is he now? Interceding at the Father? Living in you and me? But somehow we must come to death is conquered because he that has power is already conquered. Now we got to conquer. Hebrews 2 says everything is not yet subject unto man, but we can see him who has already subjected everything that is Jesus. So some way we must rise up and say, my goodness, I must put this thing, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. 1 Timothy 6 verse 12, Romans chapter 2 verse 7, seek glory, honor, and immortality and reap eternal life. Because what about the dead and what about this and what about that? Let's do our 1 Thessalonians verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Come, just listen to me till I'm finished. Concerning them which are asleep, not which was asleep, not which were asleep, those were the first fruits. These are another group because they are still asleep. This is written long after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. That you sorrow not even as others which have known. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep, not which were asleep, I'm sorry if your doctrine is not right. Not which were, but which are sleeping now. In Jesus, will God bring with him? You see, this is all future, 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 future. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Not by the word of preacher so and so, by the word of pastor so and so, by the word of prophet so and so. Well, I tell you, I prophesied this to Naomi. You wicked thing. Why didn't you say it before the time? Yeah. Why now that it's over, you prophesied it? Like that Nigerian guy that always have the prophecies after the time. Why don't they show it to us before the time? Yeah. Hmm? But after the time, we want to show you how this was prophesied. Why isn't the names called? Oh, there's going to be earthquakes. <laughs> Jesus said there's going to be earthquakes. You don't say anything if you say it's going to be. Why don't you pinpoint? There's going to be an earthquake right there. And it's going to do this and this. But people, we as a church can stop it. So let's pray together and stop that earthquake. This is a true prophet of the New Testament. You're not there to bring damnation and condemnation. You bring protection and life and love. Huh? I remember how many times I stood here not to blow my own horn, but you know, who will blow it? I mean, uh, <laughs> if it's my horn, <laughs> you know, stood here and, and we had a flood in our nation in the town called Langsburg. And then it was in the newspapers, the next flood is coming and it's going to kill more people, it's going to be greater. I said, the flood is coming and by some supernatural way it's going to pass the city in the name of the Lord Jesus because we commanded to pass another way. And he did. And nobody put that in the newspaper. Isn't it funny? Why? Because they want bad news. They don't want good news. Why don't they write about 15, 16,000 cripples that walked? Hmm? But they will write the fact that I've got a nice car. Why don't they go to the guy that gave me the money for the car? And tell him, you wicked thing, why did you buy the man a car? No, but they say, I'm wicked because I drive the car. Tell me. Anybody watching my TV, if they bring you a Mercedes now, brand new, SL, 500 or something, would you say, no, I can't, I'm a man of God? <laughs> Please go deliver it in Soweto, I don't want it. <laughs> you lie, you, you know, you what, you lie? <laughs> hmm? Did you get an SL 500? <laughs> I wish, okay. <laughs> Verse 15, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. So please listen to the word of the Lord, not by the stuff that we dish up because we play around with a concordance. 
that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Do you see there's nothing past tense in there? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Not has risen. Shall rise. Okay. Now you got to run this last five minutes with me. Says, yet once more I shake the heavens and the earth so that everything that can be shaken will be removed and everything that cannot be shaken will remain. Okay, there's a word there that, you know. We have come to the spirits of the just made perfect. They looked for a city, but they couldn't find it, so they all died. So since then, they are all that die, we have it there, that now sleep in Christ, join the cloud. So we are surrounded with this cloud. Amen. But we are here. Hmm? But when this voice will come. Wow. Hmm? Yes, come on. I'm not going to say it now. Okay, when this voice will come. The stuff that can be shaken will be removed. I will remove all the unrighteous. Psalm 37, five times. So that the righteous can inherit the earth. In the days of Noah. Thank you, beloved. Who were removed and who were left behind. All oh, like in the days of Noah. Who disappeared? The unrighteous. Who stayed behind? The righteous Noah. Like in the days of Noah, God's going to take the church away. God didn't take Noah away. God took the unrighteous away. It's deep. You've got to get a revelation to find out Noah, the righteous one, stayed behind. Because we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken or removed. So where is the kingdom? Let thy kingdom come. Okay. So, they shall rise first. Okay, okay we, we, that's where we were. Why must they rise? Because now they are spirits made perfect. But without us, they cannot be made perfect. But in the death of Christ, they were made perfect in their spirits. But without us, they can't be made perfect. Not many people here yet. A spirit is just a third of a person. You need a soul and a body to make you a person. Otherwise, we have a seance <laughs> and we're calling up ghosts. Not many people with me. So, how would they be perfect when their bodies are reunited to their spirits? So, we shall not prevent them because the dead in Christ shall rise first. He's not talking about the first resurrection or the resurrection not the first resurrection he's not talking about the f Jesus and the cross because it's all future 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 and this is written long after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus because he already mentioned them he's talking about another group now which is all the loved ones that you knew your grannies and some of your children some of your parents and some of your brothers you know that for some reason that we can't explain died 
But we have a hope that they shall be made perfect again. But we shall not prevent them from being made perfect because they will rise in a twinkling of an eye so there's going to be a constant and a progressive manifestation of the sons. Till someday it's going to become so powerful that bam, there's going to be in a twinkling a change of people. To Christ, to Christ. No, Quibus, Susie, Annalise, Peter, John, Chrissy, Peter, Susan. Wow, 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 wow. Bam, 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 bam. In a twinkling of an eye. Is the world waiting for Messiah or is the world waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God? Thank you. Okay. Verse 17. Our last verse. Then we, which are alive and remain. In other words, we could not be shaken what was happening on the earth. Not Japan, not tsunamis, not oil crisis, not BP, not floods, not oil crisis. Nothing can shake us. Why? Because we know where we're heading towards the manifested sonship. Then we which are alive and remain, now, my old, old story for those who shall be caught up. Stop. Saul, just after the encounter, where he was let down in a basket, says, this is what happened before that. I was caught up. He said it was so powerful, I do not know it was in the body or out of the body. It's unlawful, but all I can say is, it's too much. This is the best I can explain it. Your little darling sweetheart boy is running the 100 meters under nine. And you on the pavilion. And your little darling sweetheart is ahead of all the other boys under nine. You, of course, sit and say, that's my boy. (laughs) See, he's running good. Amen, he won. (laughs) Amen, sister, can you say amen? My little under nine boy won the 100 meters. My sister dear, that's why boys get ashamed of their mothers. Because their mothers lose it all. They get so caught up with that race, they forget there's other people on the pavilion. My dear brother, they forget everything. It's it's my (laughs) way. They forget they are the mayor's wife. They forget they're the speaker of the government, you know, meal. They lose it all. Why? They're so caught up. The word caught up in your Greek lexicon would mean to seize or to be captured. By the moment, says the one footnote. So in other words, after you got, yo, man, you know, you feel such stupid because you were so caught up on, 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 you know, with your vuvuzela. <laughs> then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, listen to this, together with them in the clouds. Okay. We shall be caught. He didn't say we shall be caught up in clouds. We shall be caught up, and this is the word, that the rapture people miss. Together. With them in the clouds. Who's in the clouds? Grandfather Jack. Old Aunt Susie. Dear cousin Motwatwe. You know, they are them in the clouds. (laughs) <laughs> Listen to me. Listen. These people are already caught up because we will not be ahead of them. We already read it. Why are they caught up? Out of the spirit realm, 
They, the dead, shall be raised. Now, your spirit can't be raised. He's already up there. Yeah, why not? The spirit can't be raised. He's already there. The body must be raised. The dead in Christ shall be raised. But they're already perfect in spirit. So the body must come out of the earth, join the spirit, and they say, I'm Jack again. I'm Susie again. Before that, you were spooky. If you would have appeared unto us, it would have been spooky. But now you, wow. Well, then we which are alive and remain. In other words, the shaking didn't take us away. We shall be so caught up because we are chased in a twinkling and we can all of a sudden walk through a chair. So we are caught with them that are already caught up in the clouds. Hmm? Did you get it? It's easy. You just read all the words. <laughs> to meet the Lord in the air. Oh, there it is, Kubis. There it is. There it is. We're going to meet him in the air. There's a meeting in the air coming soon, coming soon. There's a meeting. Okay. There's two Greek words for air. The one is uranos, which they would say is there. Unfortunately for them, it's only where Jesus talks about the birds of the air. <laughs> Look at the birds of the air. That word uranos means elevated above earth. Look at the birds of the Uranos, the air which is elevated. The birds, you don't look at them on the ground. Oh, look at the birdie. Birdie, birdie, birdie. But, wow, look at that bird. Look at that eagle. It's elevated, it's flying. The other word, air, is more or less air. It's the same in Greek as in English. A-E-R type of thing. Now we have A-I-R in English, but it's air. It means to breathe by excitement or by being caught up. So we've been singing, this is the air I breathe, your holy presence. Wow, man, I tell you this, this the air around me is so saturated with praise. Ooh, brother, I tell you that, you know, you walk into a stadium, you say, you know, I walked into that soccer city. The air was filled with excitement. Which air? So they are caught up. They got their bodies back. We are caught up. We change. We can move through chairs. So, so shall we meet the Lord in that air. Wow. Wow. Hee hee hee. Wow. And so shall we ever be. In other words, we're not going to hit a low again. Hmm? Like coming out of the ecstasy. You're not going to hit that low again. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So I comfort you today. You're not going to run anywhere. We're going to take over. The wicked shall be removed because they can be shaken. What must I do to be ready? You are ready. Maybe I'll just give you one scripture. Wherefore, comfort yourself together and edify one another, even as you also do. And I beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly uh, for their work's sake. Okay, what I want to say is by grace. If you are awake or if you are asleep, if you said yes to Jesus, you're still fine. 